नमोत भगवत अर्हत सम्मा संबुद्ध मे आई गेद पर्मिशन फ्रॉम महासंग एंड डियर धम फ्रेंड्स टूडे दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम टू स्पीक टू दिस धम ऑडियंस एंड आई एम रियली ग्लैड टू हैव दिस ऑपरचुनिटी Uh, on behalf of uh, the propagating dhamma to a different kind of uh, audience and i would like to thank uh, mr suminder who invited for me uh, for this sermon and who coordinated uh, with me and uh, the audience so today we are going to uh, improve our dhamma knowledge by discussing some uh, specific uh, dhamma topics related to the virtue the sila the morality so today i'm not going to talk about the definitions and what is sila uh, what is the definition and what are the uh, foremost classification of the sila <coughs> these things i am not going to talk about uh, about these things uh, in this sermon because it is somewhat uh, uh, we have to describe them in detail uh, so i'm going to talk about the sila or the virtue like uh, with the topic of uh, the what is the sphere of virtue and what is beyond that that means uh, i'm going to talk about to which level we have to improve the sila and uh, beyond that what we should do as the next level and what are the uh, results what we have to take gain from the virtue from from the morality with those results what we should do as the next level before move to the next level before we go into the next step what should be the prerequisites we should gain from this virtue from the morality so these things i'm going to talk about very briefly uh, in this sermon so when we talk about the uh, practice what is admonished by the buddha in order to achieve the ultimate liberation or the free from the suffering so free from the sansara so when we consider about this path or the practice the interesting thing is this is a gradual training we can analyze if you are learning dhamma or by yourself by reading books or under a teacher <coughs> when you are learning you are analyzing dhamma you can identify this is a gradual training you can uh, because buddha himself divided this path or the practice into several uh, segments we can see in the dhamma when you read the suttas when you read the abhidhamma you can uh, clearly identify this is divided into several specific segments so uh, we can identify, identify because of that this is a gradual training not only the gradual training these the improvements are gradual the things what we have to do and what we are gaining the improvements are also gradual not only that the results what we are achieving what we gain from this each level of the segments each level these are also the gains the achievements are also gradual so we can clearly identify these things some are mundane results uh, worldly things and some are super mundane results transcendental results we call the 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 noble paths and the fruitions and you will uh, gain achieve the ultimate bliss of nibbana the liberation so when we talk about this gradual training gradual improvements and the gradual results so the most interesting thing is these all segments or the level steps are clearly defined and they are elaborated well with every tiny detail what are those details let's take a one segment uh, when you consider about one segment in this practice you can clearly identify before you move into that particular segment in this practice uh, you can identify because it is described what should be the prerequisites what are the uh, qualifications you have to gain before you move into that specific segment specific level and uh, when you move 
into that level, what are the steps you have to follow? What are the instructions given by the Buddha to follow, to get the improvements? Then uh, within that segment, you can identify uh, by improving yourself within this practice, within this segment, what are the results or the benefits you can gain at the end of that level, at the end of that segment. And after achieving those segments, what should be the next level? What, 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 what is the next move? You, when, because to which level you have to improve this particular segment? And after reaching that particular level or the achievements, then what is the next level? What is the next step you have to take? And before you move to the next step, what are the prerequisites you have to gain with this segment? Those kind of details are uh, thoroughly, very detailly elaborated in this Dhamma. If you are learning Dhamma, if you are analyzing Dhamma, uh, while you are practicing or before you, uh, beginning, before you begin the practice, you can analyze Dhamma. So, you can uh, see these things because this practice is, uh, this training is divided well and each segment, each step, each level is elaborated well with all the tiny details. So, uh, when we talk about this gradual training, uh, you can, before you start the training, before you start this practice, uh, there is two ways, there are two ways uh, you can do this practice, do the training. One is you can analyze Dhamma before you start the uh, practice because uh, you should have at least the minimum level of knowledge about this practice. Uh, where should I begin? What is my level now? And where should I begin uh, in this practice? And what should I next? What, what should I do next? And after completing that level, uh, what should be the next move of uh, this practice? So these kind of details you have to learn first. Otherwise, you don't know where you are in this within this practice, and what should be the next step, what should be the next level I should follow after completing this first level. So these details you have to follow, you have to uh, understand, or you have to learn them by yourself. You can do it because now the all the books are available. You can read them. Uh, you can uh, get the help of the teachers, Dhamma teachers who are eligible to uh, give some help and you can uh, join some uh, Dhamma discourses, uh, dham some uh, training programs. You can get that uh, knowledge by yourself by uh, using the available resources. And the second way is you have to, if your knowledge is not that much uh, in a good level, you can uh, get the help of a teacher because you are following the training, you are following the practice uh, with the help of a teacher, under a teacher. So you, are, you don't have the knowledge, uh, what should I do now, what should I do next, what should be the result of this and uh, what kind of benefits I should gain after completing this level and within, within the next level, what kind of results I should gain what are the instructions to do? You don't have those information with you because you haven't learned, but you are depending on a teacher. But it is very uh, critical point because you have to choose a well-established, well-trained teacher, uh, which is who is uh, eligible to give instruction to a student. Because it is uh, at least uh, the minimum level of understanding you need to choose a teacher. It is very critical and it is very important if your teacher is uh, giving wrong information or uh, he is giving wrong instructions to do the practice, you will uh, ended up you will be ended up with uh, different destinations, not the ultimate nibbana. Uh, you will be misguided. So the most uh, important thing is you should have them. At least you are following by your own way uh, by analyzing them by yourself or you are depending on a teacher and you are following his instructions and following his uh, uh, steps to achieve the levels step by step. So these, le these two uh, ways you can follow, but at least minimum level of understanding is needed uh, whether you are uh, practicing this uh, way under a teacher. So when you talk about this gradual training, <coughs> we can see uh, all the practitioners, if 
is a beginner or a, a in the medium level person, uh, everyone should start with this virtue, sila. We call that sila. We have a main three categories. We call them sila, samadhi, and panya. We call the uh, threefold training, uh, tisikka. The sila is the virtue, morality. And the second one is the samadhi, concentration, with related to the jhanas and all these absorption levels. And uh, third level is the wisdom, that is related with the vipassana. So these are the main three categories, main three levels. And all the other practices, we can, we can uh, have so many classifications, but all these other sub-classifications can be included in these uh, three-fold training. So we are talking about the sila first. So we are going to talk about the sphere of sila and what is beyond that. So when we talk about this gradual training, I have mentioned several times, uh, this is like a journey. So let's take an example. If you want to uh, visit a rural area where you have never visited there, uh, uh, some, uh, for some issue, uh, for some reason, you have to go to that place. So if you want to go to that place, because uh, you have, there are four things you have to do before you start the journey. The first thing, first thing is you have to decide what is your destination. That is the first thing. And the second thing is you have to define, you have to elaborate what uh, should be the destination. That means what is the appearance. Uh, let's take you are going to uh, a new city where you have never visited. So first you want to uh, define, decide what should be the destination. It is a, this, this kind of uh, a city and the, these kind of people live there and these kind of buildings are there. This, the climate is like this and uh, these kind of mountains, forests are there. So you can elaborate then because you have never visited that city. But after getting those details, you can come to a conclusion when you go there. If you can meet those uh, definitions or the uh, things, these buildings and these kind of people, this climate, these uh, landmarks, then you can uh, come to a conclusion, okay, I have come to the real or the expected destination. Uh, without defining that, you can come to a different destinations, but you are thinking that you have come to the expected one. But uh, the first thing is you have to decide what, what should be the destination and you have to elaborate that destination with some definitions, okay, with some details. The third one is you have to choose a path from your place, from your home to that city. There may be several paths. You can some, uh, some paths may be somewhat uh, long, but more convenient. Some paths may be very short, but very difficult. The roads are very in a bad condition. So you can decide what should be my path. What path I should follow to reach that destination. So deciding the path is a third step. And then you have to define that path. Okay, you have never visited that destination through this path. So you have to uh, uh, segment, you have to divide that path into segments. Within that segment, I should meet these kind of landmarks, these kind of buildings, these kind of junctions, and where to turn left, where to turn right. You have to define those details. Then only you can uh, come to a conclusion after uh, completing that particular segment, if you have reached, if you have met those kind of landmarks, buildings, or the forest junctions, then you are, you are very uh, confident that I'm following the right path. Those four things we have to do, the deciding the destination and deciding, uh, defining the destination. And the third one is deciding the path and defining the path. So this is also a journey. Like this example, this path or the practice which is admonished by the Buddha to achieve the ultimate liberation. This is also a journey. We have to follow that path, okay? Uh, before we start the journey, these four things have to be done in this also. What is the four, four, four uh, elements, what we have to do? The first one is the design the path. I'm going to achieve these uh, arahantship. 
I'm going to achieve the Pacheka Buddha ship or the uh, I'm going to achieve the Buddha ship. I want to become a Sama Sam Buddha. These kind of decisions you have to make first. So that is my uh, decisions. So I'm going to work for achieving that purpose. So deciding is the first one. Actually, ulti uh, ultimately you are reaching to the Nibbana, but in a different condition. So you have to decide that first. Then you have to define that one. If, if I'm going to achieve that uh, Arahanship or the Pachek Buddha ship or Buddha ship, you are becoming a Buddhahood. Uh, then you have to define, I'm go if I'm going to achieve the Nibbana, what is Nibbana? What, uh, and uh, when someone come to, when someone achieve that Nibbana, what kind of experience what we can get? So what kind of a thing after achieving Nibbana, what would happen to me? How can I decide, how, can come, how I can come to a conclusion that I have achieved the Nibbana? So that defi definition should be taken. So you have to uh, elaborate that Nibbana, what is your de de destination? That is the second step. And the third one is, you have to choose a path. There are several paths you have to take. Because uh, in Dhamma also, there are several paths you can take based on the uh, character. We call it Raga Charita, Dosa Charita, Moha Charita. So these kind of Sadda Charita, these kind of characters are there. Based on the character, we have to follow a different path. But ultimately, you are going to the same de destination. But you have to choose the, because that path, deciding a path is not an easy thing. That should be done with the help of a very eligible, competent teacher. Because you cannot decide what path I should follow. Now you can get a rough idea, but ultimately it should be done with the help of a teacher who is uh, eligible to give some advice. So deciding the path is the third one. And uh, how that uh, def defining that path, elaborating that path with all the tiny details is the fourth one. So likewise, you are visiting a, a city which is, which is uh, you have never visited. Like Nibbana, we have never visited Nibbana. We have never experienced Nibbana. So you don't know what, what is the appearance, what is the uh, experience you can take, you can feel when you achieve Nibbana. We have never achieved, we have never experienced. So that destination is a very completely new one. So we have to define it well. And this path also, we have never gone to the end of this path. Sometimes we have uh, followed some uh, to a particular level to some extent, but we have never completed that path. Otherwise, we would not be here. So we have we should have achieved arhanship, or we uh, might uh, experience a parinibbana, but we have not done it yet. So that path is also very new. So we you have to define the destination as well as the path. Well. Because you are, follow, you are going to start the journey and you are going to meet these uh, landmarks or the road signs within this practice. Otherwise, you are following something, but you are not following the, if you are not following the right path, if you have not defined that well, you might be ended up with uh, very different destinations, but you think you have achieved Nibbana because, because we can see that kind of practitioner, practitioners. <coughs> disciples who have uh, done this practice uh, effortfully, but they have done, they have practiced, they have trained in a different kind of instructions, which is not admonished by the Buddha. Then they have got some uh, experiences, they have achieved some levels. Now they are thinking they have achieved because they have come to the uh, uh, stream entry level, Sotapanna level, but they have never achieved that level. That is the thing is they have they have not defined the destination well with the Dhamma with the help of a teacher. They have not defined the path well with the help of Dhamma and a teacher. So that is very important whether you uh, follow the path by your own or whether you follow the path by the help of a teacher. That is very critical and uh, the, for everyone before you begin the training, before you begin this practice, you have to at least uh, achieve the minimum level of knowledge about the practice, 
about this levels of nibbana uh, uh, about the level of this supramundane results okay otherwise you will be misguided and you will be ended up with a different destination which is uh, not the results you have to achieve by this practice so uh, when we talk about this gradual training i want to talk about some uh, sutta details i have chosen a sutta called the rathavinita sutta which is uh, uh, which is uh, in the majjhima nikaya it is actually a conversation between uh, two great disciples venerable sariputta you everyone know who is venerable sariputta he is the agga savaka and the, the foremost disciple in this our, in our sasana and he got the title who is the uh, the foremost venerable among the the wise venerables wise disciples his wisdom is lesser than only for only than the buddha uh, in this sasana all the disciples have less wisdom than than the sariput venerable sariputta and the other venerable is punnamantani putta venerable punnamantani putta he is also got a title uh, he is the greatest dhamma preacher he can elaborate dhamma well so he is the greatest uh, dhamma preacher within the uh, great disciples he got that title from the buddha so these venerables <coughs> sorry uh, these venerables had a discussion uh, about this gradual training so venerable sariputta one day reached to uh, venerable punnamantani putta and asked how so uh, are you lived this uh, holy life or the meritorious virtuous life uh, under the blessed one under the buddha he asked then venerable punnamantani putta answered yes how so my this virtuous life is lived under the blessed one <coughs> and then uh, venerable punnam venerable sariputta asked the next next questions how so your life your virtuous life is lived under the blessed one for the sake of uh, achieving the the purification of the moral virtue what is purification of moral virtue is the sila parisuddhi so sila parisuddhi is uh, the kind of a result we gain after improving our sila after improving our virtue we can achieve uh, some kind of benefits that is called the sila parisuddhi the purifications of the uh, moral virtue so venerable sariputta is asking you are uh, maintaining this virtuous life under the blessed one uh, in uh, for the sake of this sila parisuddhi then venerable venerable punnamantani putta answered no also am i am not uh, my uh, virtuous life is not lived for the sake of this uh, purification of moral virtue that is not my ambition that is not my complete goal uh, by maintaining this kind of a virtuous life what is sila parisuddhi when you start to uh, uh, improve or protect a kind of a sila it can be five precept it can be eight precepts it can be 10 precepts or when or a monk or a novice it can be a different set of rules uh, moral code but you are achieving but you are maintaining that sila okay then after doing this effortfully for some kind of a uh, for a period of time then sometimes in the beginning it is very difficult to uh, maintain this uh, kind of a seal these uh, rules sometimes you uh, will come to an end with the breaking some rules so then you have to observe them again and you have to start it in the beginning but after some period when you are developing uh, improving this seal effortfully then you can feel that it is somewhat convenient for you to protect this seal so you can uh, uh, very easily protect these rules so uh, after doing some after having this kind of effort full training then you will come to a very a convenient comfortable zone that your sila is very stable your uh, very uh, your sila is very established because 
uh, very conveniently, very easily, you can maintain this virtuous life. That is called the purification level of purification of moral virtue. It is not the improvement. When you are purifying your sila, it is not the result yet. You are just uh, under the process of purifying your sila. That is not the result. Still, you are in the process. But when you come to a certain level, which is very stable with your sila, with your virtue, with your morality, that is the result. It can be a different level with the characters, but uh, if you can feel that it is now very stable, you are very convenient with the sila, that is a result, that is a purification of the moral virtue. That is called the sila parisuddhi. The ver so venerable uh, Sariputta asked, for that end result, if something can gain, uh, if something can be gained by developing the sila, that is a purification of the uh, moral virtue, uh, for that, for achieve that level, for achieve that result, are you maintaining this virtuous life? Then the answer was no. It's because I am uh, maintaining this virtuous life, not for that. So then the next question is, so then this uh, purification of moral virtue is very, uh, uh, very foremost thing because you have to achieve that level. Otherwise, you are not stable. You, you can uh, move to the next level, but you are not stable. Sometimes a uh, uh, very uh, weak defilement can uh, disrupt your path, your practice. Sometimes when you achieve some jhana, your sila is not purified. You have never achieved the purification level of the, the expected purification level of the virtue, moral virtue. But you are moving to the next level and you are trying to achieve some jhanas, some levels of con uh, concentration. You can achieve some levels, but because your sila is not purified, you have not achieved purification of moral virtue, a uh, very small defilement can harm you, can destroy all the results what you have achieved by the concentration. That can be happen. So, this achieving this purification level, at least for the minimum level of the uh, purification of this moral virtue is very essential. Uh, how you can how you can decide that I have achieved this kind of purification with moral virtue? Uh, we can see some results. What you can gain from the uh, by achieving the sila parisuddhi. Uh, that is when you are training effortfully with sila, maintaining a virtuous life. Then after some period, you will be free from remorse. Avipatisaro free from remorse. If, uh, if you have done some wrong things in the past, sometimes you are regretting about that. If you couldn't do some uh, good things, meritorious things, you miss the chance, then you are regretting that I should have done that. Okay, These kind of regrets, repentings are there if you are not maintaining a virtuous life, meritorious life. So your uh, mind will be come to a regret you are repenting about the past, about what you have done, about what you have not done. So these kind of things, the remorses, will not be there if you are maintaining a very much uh, with the virtue. If you are maintaining a, a virtuous life, then you will not be regretting, I shouldn't have done this thing. Because you have not done the akusalas, unwholesome things in the past because you were maintaining a meritorious life, a virtuous life uh, for, a some, for, for, for some period of time. So then you are not regretting about the past like I shouldn't have done that thing. And you are doing some meritorious things. So you are not regretting about the past. I should have done that thing because I missed that chance. I should have done that thing uh, without missing that chance. So these things will be, we are saying the avipatisaro, regretting, remorses, repenting. If you are maintaining a virtuous life, virtuous uh, uh, practice, then after some period, when you are doing this effortfully, again and again, then you will come to uh, this level, you are free from remorses. Okay, then this is a, a sign that you, you are coming to a 
uh, benefits. You are coming to a certain level which is expected by Buddha after maintaining a virtuous life. So without, yeah, if you are free from remorses, less remorses, less regrets shows that your sila is very good. You are, you are, you have, a, you are reaching to the purification level of the sila, moral virtue. Then, if you have this free from remorse, if you have the avipatisaro, then it creates the uh, joy. We call the the early stage of the piti joy. We call the pamojja. When you have avipatisara, you will have the pamojja, the early stage of the piti. Then, if the joy is there in your mind, then the next level, then next benefit is, then the uh, piti arises. What is that? The rapture. The rapture is the very strong uh, happiness. You are happy about your practice, happy about your training, happy about what you are doing and what you are not doing. So you are happy. That is called rapture, piti. That is because you have gained that piti because of the sila. Because you are not regretting anything, then the pamoja arises, then the piti arises. Then, if you have piti, then you have a very calm mind. We call the pasaddi. Uh, you are not thinking about the past. We are not, you are not thinking about the uh, future much because you are very happy about the present moment. You are happy about the present life because you are having a very virtuous life, virtuous practice. Then the pasaddi arises. What is that? The, the calmness about your mind. Then when the pasaddi is there, the next benefit is the, what you call the sukha arises. Sukha means the uh, pleasure because it is related with the mind and the body as well. Sukha means you are in very comfortable situation. It is very comfortable with your body and with, with your mind. That is called sukha. And when sukha is there, you will, your mind will be uh, ten to the samadhi, concentration. So when you, uh, when you sit in a calm place and when you are trying to focus on a particular object, it can be a, any kind of a meditative object, then it is very easy to concentrate your mind in that object. That is gain because you have avipatisara, free from remorses. Then you have got the joy, the pamojya. Then you have got the piti, the rapture. Then you have gained the pasaddi. Uh, pasaddi means the uh, what you call the, uh, the some serenity, some serenity, and the, you you will gain the joy. Uh, you will gain the sukha, the pleasure. Because of these conditions, your mind is very uh, eligible for the to develop the concentration. The, when you are feeling, when you are experiencing these kind of results at the end of the uh, virtuous life, then you can have an idea. So I'm reaching to a, a level of a purification of this moral virtue. So you can define this uh, level by uh, analyzing Dhamma well. But uh, you have to achieve that level before you move to the next level. Okay? The Punnamantaniputta, Venerable Punnamantaniputta uh, uh, answered to Venerable Sariputta, for this result, what is what can be gained by a virtuous life by maintaining, uh, maintaining uh, virtuous life effortfully, you can achieve this kind of uh, result, a purification level. That is not the purifying level. This is a purified level. That is, what we, that is why we call the purification of moral virtue. That is a very stable position, stable condition, what you can gain by doing, developing the uh, may, uh, virtuous life. So, uh, the next question, uh, Venerable Sariputta asks from the Venerable Punnamantani Putta, then uh, also you are lived this meritorious or the virtuous life under the Blessed One for the sake of uh, Chitta Pasu, uh, the Chitta Visuddhi, <coughs> Chitta Visuddhi, the purification of the mind. So Venerable uh, Punnamantani Putta answered, no also, my life is lived not for the sake of the Chitta Parisuddhi, the purification of mind. What is Chitta Parisuddhi? Before you move to the Chitta Parisuddhi, uh, the purification of the mind, you have to come to a, uh, at least the minimum level of purification of moral virtue. 
then it is very easy to develop the concentration. The when you try to when you start to develop the concentration, then you can achieve some uh, levels of concent higher concentration. You can achieve the excess concentration we call upachara samadhi. Then you can achieve some uh, uh, absorption concentration we call the uh, jhanas we call appana samadhi and these kind of tranquility levels by developing the, the tranquility samatha you can achieve some upachar samadhi and the appana samadhi jhanas and sometimes you can gain at least you have achieved the patama jhana the first level of the absorption concentration we call the patama jhana you have achieved the purification of the mind because all the five hindrances are suppressed uh, for a longer period. So the hindrances are not uh, come to the mind if you are with the concentration with this patamajjhana. Okay, uh, then uh, if you have if you have achieved at least one jhana patamajjhana, yeah, we can call that person with is with the purification of the mind. Then someone can do the uh, concentration, develop the concentration, develop the tranquility effortfully and achieve the all the four rupa jhanas. And four rupa jhanas, we call, he can achieve the atta samapatti, all the eight fold uh, concentration levels. Excuse me. Then sometimes after achieving the atta samapatti, all the concentration levels, he can achieve some uh, abhinyas. They are called the extraordinary uh, knowledges and wisdoms and extraordinary uh, powers. What you can do, so you can create something, you can walk on the uh, sky, you can walk on the uh, water, you can uh, dive in the ground. So these are the mental superpowers. And sometimes you can uh, uh, you can uh, uh, see the others' minds. You can uh, uh, recall the previous birth, previous lives of you and the others. These are the super extraordinary knowledges. So these two kind of extraordinary knowledges and extraordinary um, the mental powers. So you can achieve by developing the Attasamapatti and developing the Abhinyas. So these are all belong to the purification of the mind, which is the Chitta. Uh, the Chitta Visuddhi. So, Venerable Sariputta asks, you are living, you are maintaining this kind of a virtuous life for the sake of uh, this kind of a Chitta Parasuddhi. Then Venerable Punnamantani Putta answered, no also, that is not my goal, that is not my ambition, that is not what I expect from the uh, this kind of a meritorious or the virtuous life practice. The third question, Third question is, also your very virtuous life is lived under the Blessed One for the sake of the, the Ditti Visuddhi, the purification of views. Because we have, uh, the, the answer was no also, uh, that is not my ultimate target, that is not what I expect from this kind of a practice. What is Ditti Visuddhi? What is the purification of views? When we discuss about that, hmm, that we have a, a set of uh, views, some are right views, some are wrong views. The main view is we have a, uh, the, we have a understanding, we have a view that there is a self, there is I, and there is a, my mother, there is my father, there is my uh, family, the family members, and there is my children. So these kind of, there is a person, there is I. Then we, have, we all have that self view, okay, we call Atta Ditti. There is a wrong view because it is actually not there. It, there is actually no self. There is zero. That is uh, empty with a self. There is no a person. But we don't have, we, we can't come to that stage, that level by just thinking there is no self, there is no I. We have to contemplate about these things. What is actually there? What is actually in this body? What, what is actually mind is, what are, how can I think, how can I work, how can I uh, eat, how can I walk, these kind of things are done, in which way. So we have to, because that is why we come to a, 
conclusion okay there should be a i there should be a person yeah, there should be a self uh, that self is doing all these acts all these things so it is easy to easy to come to that kind of a conclusion but it is not right that is a wrong view so by developing this kind of a practice now we have moved into the the wisdom category the first level of wisdom category is this purification level of the views actually the purification of wrong views we are clearing we are purifying our views we are uh, like uh, come to a uh, the correct view so this is kind of a thing we can because you have to understand the purification of mind purification of views is uh, the end result of this segment of this level particular level so uh, while you are purifying your views you have to do a lot of things you have to learn about namas we call the materialities uh, corporeality we call the uh, rupa the corporeality of the materiality and the namas the mentalities what is consciousness and what are the mental factors those are the namas these are the main two segments in this body and what we call the consciousness okay all these things all the self is comprised with these namas uh, mentalities and the rupas materialities or the corporeality other than these things there is no person there is no self there is no i we have to uh, contemplate about these things actually there are only namas and rupas they arise then they come to end and they vanishes and they vanish and uh, a new set of namas new set of rupas arise then it will come to uh, uh, end and the new set comes new set uh, arises and this is happening like generations and will not come to an end by the help of these namas and rupas we are doing acts we are talking we are seeing and we are walking we are eating we are sleeping we are sitting we are doing all the things we are thinking all these things are done with the help of the namas and the rupas we have to contemplate about these things then uh, after some period you are contemplating effortfully about this namas and rupas before you start this uh, segment or the level you have to know about the what is namas there are uh, different set of uh, elements in this nama category there are consciousness there are different uh, levels of consciousness and there are mental factors we call the chetasika there are few number of chetasikas sorry there are a few number of chetasikas we have to learn about these things what are the names of the chetasikas what are the qualities what are the characteristics of these chetasikas and you have to learn, learn them uh, very uh, in a detailed manner then only you can start this contemplation otherwise what you are going to contemplate about namas and rupas just thinking about namas and rupas it will not come to an end it not will will not give a result then you have to uh, contemplate in detail about these uh, namas and rupas then uh, while you are purifying these things when you come to a certain level when you have developed to a very good level then you can uh, come to a very uh, very uh, stable conclusion very clearly you can experience you can uh, it will uh, be understood well okay surely there is no self surely there is only namas and rupas here there is no other than the namas and rupas we are thinking that there is a self but it is not there it is not like that we are thinking today it is a knowledge we call the vipassana jnana it is kind of a knowledge what we are taking what we are achieving by developing the vipassana this is ditti vishuddhi is a result of a vipassana and is it is a vipassana jnana insight knowledge what you have achieved by the penetrative uh, insight meditation so the what is the result the purification of views then you uh, at the result you at the result you are having uh, there is no i there is no self only the namas and rupas are there so this is a process of namas and rupas that is a very stable and you can uh, eliminate the sakkhaya ditti at actually it is not eliminated uh, completely but you are suppressing for a longer period it will not come to the uh, surface level 
and you are not thinking as a person, you are not thinking as a self, you are not thinking as I, because you have achieved a knowledge which is called the Ditti Visuddhi purification of uh, weaves. Then, uh, Venerable Punnamanta Niputta answered, that is not my ultimate target. Okay, then, uh, Venerable Sariputta asked, okay, also then, you are lived this meritorious or the virtuous life under the blessed word in order to achieve the kanka vitarana visuddhi, the free from the purification by uh, doubt, by uh, overcoming the doubt, overcoming the doubt. What is the doubt? We have a doubt. Hmm? Uh, sometimes it is a wrong view. Uh, whether I am created by a God, I am created by a, a Brahma, there are beliefs in the world there because the, the beings are created by Brahma, beings are created by a supernatural uh, being. So, uh, these kind of beliefs are there. Sometimes a Buddhist can have because he is not well established in this uh, sasana. He can have that kind of a thing. And sometimes uh, he can have an idea like it is emerged without any cause, like without it is not created by anyone, but it is emerged without any cause. Suddenly it emerged. Because I, uh, I came here without any previous cause. Pre I haven't had a previous birth, previous life, and I don't have a next life, next birth. So I emerged uh, spontaneously and emerged without any reason, and I live this life and I will die. That is a finish, that is the end. These kind of beliefs are there. So these are doubts, whether I have lived before, whether I am living after this life, these are the doubts. So these are, we call, there are 60, uh, 62 wrong uh, views in the Buddha Siras. We call the uh, uh, 62 uh, wrong views. There are, in the Brahma Jala Sutta, you can identify, you can analyze those uh, dittis, wrong views. Uh, when these uh, things are arises, then you are not in the perfect level, you are not in the practice. So, you have to overcome by this doubt. If you have some doubt whether this is, uh, whether this is created by a God or a supernatural being, whether this is um, emerged without any reason, spontaneously. So, these kind of beliefs we have to overcome. There should be no doubt about the, uh, this uh, generation of Namas and Rupas. In the Ditti Visuddhi, you, you have come to a uh, you have come to a purification level that there is no a self. Uh, you are removing the Sakkaya Ditti. But you have not understood, you have not understood uh, what, how the Nama, gen generation of Namas and Rupas arise, uh, how they exist, uh, which uh, help of what. Now you are going to contemplate about, analyze about the reasons. We call the Pachya, the reason causes. We can uh, contemplate about the patic uh, samuppada, the dependent realities, uh, the, the, or we call the causality, patic samuppada. Because of patic samuppada, because of the causes, because of the previous causes, these new namas and rupas arise. They uh, exist for a, a very short period and they vanish, they, they pass away. Then the new set of namas and rupas arise because of the previous causes. We have got this life because of the previous causes. And we are going to a next life because of the previous causes uh, for, uh, with the help of the kamma. So likewise, you are contemplating about the reasons, causes, how these generation, how the existence of these namas and rupas, these mentalities and materialities, how exist, how they are existing in this world. Because of the causes, because of the kamma, because of the ahara, because of the several kind of uh, reasons, causes. You can learn them in the Paticca Samuppada. In detailed version is the Pattana. Patta, if you learn Pattana, there are various kind of uh, reasons which is uh, helping to emerge new realities, namas and rupa. So, when you are developing this, when you are contemplating, when you are developing this uh, insight, penetrative insight meditation, that is, you are purifying your doubts, you are overcoming, you are in the process of overcoming uh, from the doubts. You have never, you have not come to the end. But after doing this penetrative insight meditation to a certain period, then you come to a level, uh, what we call the result, 
that is the purification of the puric purification by overcoming overcoming doubts that is a kanka vitarana visuddhi purification by overcoming doubts that is the results of that particular segment we are in the fourth segment fourth level we are talking about the fourth level what is the result of the fourth level is the purification of the uh, purification by overcoming doubts that is a kanka vitarana visuddhi uh, venerable punnamanta niputta answered for this kanka vitarana visuddhi to achieve that I'm not uh, maintaining this virtuous life. That is not my uh, end uh, result, but that is not my target. That is not my uh, final achievement. I'm expecting uh, by maintaining this kind of a virtuous life. Then Venerable Sariputta asked, okay, also then your life, your, this virtuous life is lived under the Blessed One for the sake of achieving the Magga Magga Jnanadasana Visuddhi. What is Magga Amagga? That is a purification of uh, knowledge and vision about the path and what is not path. Uh, magga is the path, uh, amanga is not path, the wrong path. What is magga is the magga is twofold, the correct meditation process or the correct practice, and the uh, second one is the uh, ultimate, the noble paths which eliminate the defilements completely. We call it is fourfold. Fourfold noble paths we call the Sotapati Magga, Sakadagami Magga, uh, Anagami Magga, and Arhatta Magga. Those are the those are also Maggas, the correct Maggas, and the correct meditation practice also Magga. What is Amagga? Amagga is the uh, wrong meditation or the wrong practice, wrong, wrong meditation practice. And uh, in this level, in this Magga Magga Jnanadasana, before you come to the Magga Magga Jnanadasana Visuddhi, some a uh, very bright light arise when very uh, very uh, uh, strong piti strong joy or the pleasure arises strong uh, uh, sukha strong pleasure strong rapture arises and sometimes you come to a uh, feeling that i'm the one who uh, do who is doing the meditation well the others cannot do like me this kind of mana arises uh, these things we call the upakkilesa uh, because they are, they are very close to the practice. Like you can feel them like a result of this meditation process. Uh, but you have to understand these, uh, there is a verse called Obaso Piti Passaddi Adimokkocha Paggaho Sukhanyanam Pattanam Upekkacha Nikanticha. These are tenfold things. Some are defilements directly, some are objects for the defilements. So these are arises only who have achieved the Ditti Visuddhi and the Kankavitana Visuddhi. Then uh, this person will feel, experience a very bright light, very good uh, like uh, rapture, a strong rapture and uh, very good uh, Pasaddi, uh, serenity, uh, very, very, very good Sukha, very good pleasure. These kind of things, sometimes he, uh, he get the attachment to the vipassana, what he is doing. I am the one who does the uh, meditation well, the others cannot do like me. I am the highest person in the meditation. These kind of attachment can happen towards the uh, meditative process, what you are uh, uh, training, what you are practicing. These are called upakkilesa, very close to the practice. And these are arises. These arise only for the one who have achieved to a very uh, good level of uh, vipassana, not for the uh, ordinary person, not for the uh, who begins the meditation process. This is in the middle. This is we are in the fourth level. Magga magga jnana dasana visuddhi. So in this four, uh, fifth level, sorry, fifth level, fifth level, you will feel, you will experience these kind of things. Sometimes you will be. Uh, going far away from the meditative practice, you cannot achieve the noble paths by uh, training the correct path. That is, you have uh, directed to the amagga, the wrong path. But you have to uh, contemplate well this, uh, the strong piti, strong uh, obasa, the strong light, and the strong pleasure, strong joy, these are the attachment towards the vipassana, these are upakkilesa or the object for the upakkilesa. These are not the results of the vipassana. 
So I should not focus on these things and I should focus about the, the contemplating about the Namas and Rupas like Anicca Dukkha Anatta, like impermanence, suffering and uh, non-self. So these kind, you have to focus on these things. Then you will come to a result that you can divide with this is the wrong path. I should not go in that way. This is the correct path. I should follow that way. This is the result of this level we call the uh, Magga Magga Jnana Dasana Visuddhi. And it is the purification of purification of uh, by knowledge and wisdom uh, about path and what is not path. When you come to the when you come to this level, you are very stable because beyond this level the defilement, defilements will not arise. If you are doing the effort fully, the vipassana, the defilement, this is the final stage, you will, uh, the defilements will uh, bother you, will disturb you. And if you can overcome by uh, selecting, by, uh, by deciding the correct path, by identifying the correct path, then these defilements will uh, never arise if you are doing the vipassana continuously, effortfully until you achieve the noble path. This is a very higher level of knowledge, uh, vipassana knowledge. So, uh, this is the result. If you have achieved, if you have identified the correct path by uh, overcoming these kind of uh, uh, upakkilesa, then you have diverted, you have uh, chosen the correct path and you are trying to continue on that path. You are in the safe zone. That is the result. That is not purifying. That is the purification level, purification of knowledge by knowledge and wisdom about the path, about the path and what is not path. Then, uh, but Venerable Pundamantani uh, said, "This is not my end result. I am not expecting only this. I am not expecting only this one. I have more expectation about this path." Then Venerable Sariputta asked, "Okay, then uh, you are lived you do your virtuous life for the sake of achieving the." So this is the purification of uh, purification by knowledge and wisdom about the path, about the practice. It is uh, actually ninefold. We call the Navamaha Vipassana Jnana. There are, we, we, we call the Udayabhya Jnana. We call the Banganu Passana Jnana. Udayabhya Passana Jnana is a knowledge of rising and passing away. This is a matured one. It is a matured, matured one and it will not be disturbed by the uh, upakkilesa or the defilement because we have sub, uh, suppressed those defilements by the previous uh, level. So Udayabhya uh, Jnana and the next one is Banganu Passana Jnana that is called the, uh, the knowledge of dissolution, the Banganu Passana Jnana and uh, then you Bhaitu Pattana Jnana, uh, knowledge of uh, the fearfulness, these kind of things, Udayabhya uh, Passana Jnana, then the uh, Banganu Passana Jnana, Baitu Pattana Jnana, Adhinava Passana Jnana, Nibbidanu Passana Jnana. These kind of nine levels, nine knowledges actually, Vipassana Jnana, knowledges, you have to achieve within this segment, within this level. It is a very high level of Vipassana, high level of insight, penetrative insight meditation uh, because it is not disturbed by the uh, defilements. You can achieve the higher levels of knowledges. Uh, this is very because you are very close to the uh, supramundane results, transcendental results. You are very close for the achieving the Nibbana, Sotapati Magga. So, Venerable uh, Punnamantani Putta said, this, uh, this is not my result, this is not my expectation. My virtuous life is not for that. I am not expecting those things only because I have further expectation. So, uh, you have to understand uh, the purification by knowledge and wisdom about the practice is a result. You are contemplating about the, uh, these uh, sankhara, uh, namas and rupas by the uh, impermanence, by the suffering and by the non-self, anicca These These are the, you are purifying. You have not achieved the vipassana jnana, but uh, after you doing the vipassana, meditative, process effortfully, you can achieve this, you can uh, achieve, you can reach to these knowledges, vipassana knowledge, what I have mentioned. You can learn them uh, in detail because I am not going to uh, discuss about them in detail version because we do not have much time. 
So the result is when you have, when you achieve those kind of uh, knowledges, that is the purification level, that is the result of this level. This is the sixth level and you can, you are eligible to move to the next level which is the final level. And what is the final level? Uh, Venerable uh, Sariputas, uh, also you are, your virtuous life is lived for the sake of achieving the uh, Jnana Dasana Visuddhi that is called the purification by purification of knowledge and wisdom, knowledge and wisdom, sorry. And uh, but the answer was still no. Also, I am not uh, lived my virtuous life under the blessed one, not for that. Because what is uh, Jnana Dasana Visuddhi is the four noble paths. That is eliminating the defilements completely, step by step. By Sotapati Manga, you are eliminating permanently some set of uh, several kind of defilements. Then the next level, you have to do the Vipassana again then uh, come to this level and you are eliminating, you are suppressing some uh, very strong defilements and from the Anagami Magga, uh, we call the non-returner path, uh, we, by the Anagami Magga, you are eliminating permanently some set of uh, defilements and from the Arahatta Magga, uh, path of the Arahant, uh, you, are you are eliminating all the defilements which is remaining in your mind. Those are the supramundane results, supramundane path actually. You are achieving supramundane results by uh, achieving these paths. So we call them the supramundane or transcendental paths, four noble paths, Aryamagga. So we call them, uh, if you have achieved, while you are doing, while you are uh, uh, practicing this, until you achieve the Sotapati Magga, uh, you, we are not we are not telling that you have achieved the purification of knowledge and wisdom because you are in the process of doing that. When you achieve that Sotapati Magga for the, for the, uh, because for the first time you are achieving the Sotapati Magga and this is the level of purification. This is a result actually. But you have to do four times uh, to achieve the other levels, other paths also because you cannot achieve the uh, all the far, all the four paths at once because it can, it has, it has to be done gradually. Uh, so this is the way. This is the seventh path and the last segment, last level uh, until you achieve the nibbana. But the answer was no. Also, I am not lived my virtuous life no, for the sake of achieving this jnana uh, dasana visuddhi. I am not living to achieve these magas, four four magas, four noble paths. Then, Venerable Sariputta asked, also, then, what is your purpose? What is your expectations? You are saying, uh, among these seven purification levels, what we call Sila Visuddhi, Chitta Visuddhi, and uh, Ditti Visuddhi, Kankha Vitarana Visuddhi, and Magga Magga Jnana Dasana Visuddhi, Patipada Jnana Dasana Visuddhi, and Jnana Dasana Visuddhi. Among those seven levels, this is the main foremost classification about this practice. This is our practice, this is the gradual training, what I have mentioned in the beginning. Gradual training, gradual improvements and the gradual results. So among these, all the pa, all the segments, you are saying, these are not my expectation. And what is your expectation? Then he answered, when Purnamantani Putta answered, uh, also, I am leave it, I am maintaining this kind of a virtuous life, Brahmacharya, in order to achieve, not for these seven kind of seven uh, levels, I am, I am expecting uh, to achieve the uh, ultimate Nibbana, which is not the, which is not with the clingings, which is called the, in Pali, Anupadi Sesa Parnibbana. Anupadi Sesa Parnibbana Thaya Kova also uh, Bhagavati Brahmacharya Ngussati, that means uh, also, I am living this, I am maintaining this kind of a virtuous life in order to achieve the Anupada Parnibbana, in order to achieve the ultimate Nibbana, which is without clingings, which is without uh, these kind of uh, Upadi, or the Kilesas, or the defilements, or the these clinging. So, that is the ultimate expectation because what is Anupada Sisa Parnibbana? When someone becomes an Arahant, he is still not come to the Anipadhisis Parnibbana, but he is completely uh, free from defilements. 
because he have completely eliminated the next life so until the death until he die as a, a arahan he has to live he has to suffer with some diseases he has to suffer with the age he has to suffer so many kind of physical sufferings because he doesn't have the mental sufferings because defilements are not there he have he is free from mental sufferings but he has this uh, body because it is given by not this life it is given by the previous karma what we have done in the previous life or uh, before the previous life uh, in the previous sansara it is a result of a previous karma so achieving the arahanship will not eradicate this body at once so you have to wait until this uh, body come to at the end until this life come to the end because this life is a result of the past karma so you have to wait until the result of this past karma come to an end so the until that level the arahant even waiting for the anupadasisa parinibbana what would happen when someone achieve the anupadasisa parinibbana there is nothing when a arahant come to the death in, when arahant dies then there is nothing is remaining no any aggregates because within these five aggregates uh, rupa vedana sanya sankara vijnana nothing will go to the next life because there is nothing called next life for the arahant so he come to an end of the sansara that is the final or the ultimate expectation of a arahant of an arahant that is what is mentioned by the venerable punnamantani putta that is what we have to understand what is the sila there so we have understood what is the sila it is the foremost level that is the first level but after that what kind of things what we have to improve there are so many levels after that sila so what we have to understand that sila is the foremost thing that is true without sila we cannot develop the higher levels we cannot achieve the higher results in this asana it is like the foundation of a building without a foundation you cannot uh, build a sky skyscrapers without the high rise buildings uh, without having a strong foundation likewise without having a strong foundation with the sila you cannot build your practice with higher levels like chitta visuddhi ditti visuddhi kankha vitarana visuddhi these kind of levels you cannot build on that sila foundation if it is not strong you can build you can build a, a skyscraper or the high rise building without a very weak foundation but in a certain level it will collapse likewise if you are sila your foundation is not well strong you can develop a concentration that is true you can develop but a small defilement can uh, vanish can destroy all the results what you have gained there are stories in the uh, commentaries in the uh, pali canon also uh, who have achieved those high levels of concentration by small defilement it will destroy all the achievements of the concentration that is happen because your foundation is not well enough strong that should be done but you should not stick into that range because you have to develop you have to uh, maintain you have to develop that sila to a certain extent and you should move to the next level then within that next level you have to improve yourself and you have to develop and after achieving them some uh, benefits or the results then you have to move to the next level likewise you have to follow this gradual training which is which is admonished by buddha otherwise you cannot come to the higher levels you can you cannot achieve the higher uh, results and ultimately the supramundane results okay so the sila is the very foremost things when you compare with the concentration it is very low level buddha is also mentioning apamattakam sila mattakam apamattakam ora mattakam sila mattakam when you compare with the samadhi concentration it is very low level it is very basic when you compare the wisdom with the concentration it is also very low because you cannot achieve anything uh, by sila which is which should be achieved by the samadhi let's say uh, access concentration absorption concentration or jhanas or the abhinyas you can never achieve by sila only you can never achieve because it is a different function 
you have to do the uh, uh, tranquility you have to develop the tranquility you have to do the samatha vipa samatha meditation in order to achieve these absorptions in those uh, abhinyas but even though you have atta samapatti even though you have the abhinyas it is the supreme level of concentration whether when you have abhinyas super superpowers but you can never achieve single wisdom single vipassana knowledge by that atta samapatti you have to develop you have to improve the wisdom you have to do the penetrative insight meditation that by use that only you can achieve the single very uh, basic level of knowledge of vipassana because it is a different function wisdom is a different function concentration is a different function sila is a different function but it sila is a very basic thing then you have to develop the samadhi and you have to achieve the chitta uh, chitta visuddhi then you can move to the wisdom the other five segments five level so th- that should be understood and uh, i think you can uh, you uh, you could grab some information about this gradual training and you should not stick to the sila you have to go beyond that uh, sphere of the sila you have to go beyond of the concentration you have to achieve the higher levels otherwise you are not a, a true dis- a disciple uh, which is buddha expected Uh, by uh, within this gradual training so i think uh, you have got some idea about this gradual gradual training and uh, with those information uh, i'm going to conclude the dhamma talk and uh, by allowing the session for the q and a and uh, i wish uh, these merits we have ac- accumulated uh, several kind of uh, merits by preaching dhamma by listening to the dhamma uh, by contemplating about dhamma these are very high level merits you have accumulated uh, throughout this uh, uh, one hour uh, so these meritorious things merits will be a cause i wish all of you may have this uh, merits and this will be a great cause a strong cause to achieve the ultimate bliss of nibbana for all of you as uh, you are, uh, you are expecting to achieve so i'm giving a chance for the q and a session you can raise some uh, uh, questions related to the dhamma effects i have given if we if we have some time extra time you can go for the other questions as well okay Yes. Uh, I would like to express my heart felt gratitude for your enlightening the Dhamma talk on the importance of morality and its benefits. Okay. Uh, you talk has been truly profound and has provided us with invaluable insights. I am excited to share with you some of the questions that our audience has posted. Uh, first one is Was created uh, as is to Buddhism. Sorry, I couldn't get the idea completely. Some disturbance. Can you uh, read out the question again? can you uh, repeat the question again i i heard the uni- about the universe uh, but uh, the the beginning part i missed so uh, uh, the question is how does morality impact personal relationships morality impact the that is Uh, the morality the uh, f- that actually it affects the personality the, when you compare with the family when you compare about the uh, like uh, company or the institute where you work or you you might have a business your own business or a shop and you are dealing with some your relatives and uh, for a kid he is uh, working with the uh, students friends and uh, in the school or the classes uh, this morality is very essential because 
uh, by protecting the sila by uh, having a virtuous life you are allowing the other person or the other persons around you having a comfortable life let's take uh, one person you have to let's take a murderer who kills person and uh, one day you have to sleep in one room with that person can you sleep uh, well uh, comfortably with that person no because we know he is a person without morality then you are you will never you at for a second you will not go to sleep because uh, uh, when you just soon after you go to sleep that person can kill you also because he is a killer he has killed so many several person because he you know that that person has doesn't have a morality he is not maintaining a virtuous life so that make you uncomfortable let's uh, make an example for your family you have a in a husband and wife you have kids okay you have parents okay these relatives or the family members if you are not a virtuous per- person sometimes you are lo- you are losing you are not giving that chance that comfortable level condition comfortable environment for your husband or the wife you are not giving that comfort- comfortable zone for the kids for the parents because if let's say you are a virtuous person then your wife or the husband is trusting you because he knows or her she knows that this person will not do bad things because he is a person with morality he protects these kind of rules he will not go to the other men he she will go she will not go to the other men he will not go to the other women so this is a basic level of morality which gives the comfortability for the other uh, family members your relationships uh, i think you can uh, uh, the thing is the morality is uh, you are giving the peace for the others you are developing a very good uh, life you are accumulating so many merits that is true it is a foremost uh, benefit you are at- achieving by the morality but think about the others around you your family in your company if the company uh, owner is a virtuous person if the laborers or the uh, the subordinates or the superiors are virtuous person you are very free you are very uh, comfortable with that environment because you know you can put your purse on the table and go somewhere because you know no one will steal my money with my pur- in my purse you can keep anything your mobile phone or your laptop in somewhere if you are sure because when you go to a temple you are very comfortable no because you know uh, thieves are not there only the monks live there because they are not going to steal your stuff because you can keep something next to a monk and go somewhere and come back it will be there as you kept there that is the second secondary uh, thing what you can get you can achieve But actually it is uh, you are giving for the others that the peaceful thing the comfortability for the others that affect for the uh, relationships yes we can go for the next question if you are uh, like uh, satisfied with the quick answer okay, okay manthe uh, we uh, go to the next question yes uh, how universe was uh, created according to buddhism universe the whole universe <laughs> that is actually uh, that is, we know our thing because there is a there are suttas which is elaborating how this uh, chakkaval our universe or we call this uh, our world our earth how it is created it is in the Uh, it is uh, actually uh, dis- uh, elaborated by the buddha himself but he is not talking about the universe because it is actually not related with the practice the thing is uh, venerable mugalan venerable mugalana he wanted to uh, come to a come to an end to reach to the and go to the end and uh, how it is created and how it is how the end uh, appears okay Uh, he wanted to uh, like uh, do a experiment analyze this thing but he uh, never 
came to an end and the Buddha uh, asked him to come back. That is actually, uh, we call, that is actually understood by uh, Buddha only because uh, the information about the universe, uh, how it is created and some facts are there, how the universe begins and how it uh, exists and how it uh, uh, come to a stable position and how it going to decay and how it going to vanish and then again it will arise, it will emerge uh, with some reasons and how the beings come to that earth, uh, how come to this world and how the mankind is uh, began, these kind of things. But actually you can say uh, with the Namas and Rupas, actually the world is uh, totally created by the Rupas, we call the, the corporeality or the materiality. There are 28 rupas. Uh, within these rupas, which is not for the living, there are a few rupas which is only for the living beings. Uh, for the non-living beings or, the, or the, uh, the material things, the physical things, there are rupas. We call the Utuja rupa, Utu rupa. Uh, these, the whole universe is created by this, but if you are explaining the, the beginning of the world and the ending of the world, it's a, it's a uh, descriptive descriptive explanation. I think we cannot uh, go for that kind of a big explanation now. Actually, it is not related with the practice. That is why Buddha is admonishing uh, not to go to uh, explore about the universe or the world. That is a different thing. You should not uh, go for that one because it is uh, not related for the practice to achieve without uh, with, without any uh, tiny detail about the world or the universe, you can achieve all the you can achieve all the result in this practice without any detail about the universe. That is why Buddha is not giving those uh, details because they are unnecessary details. Are you happy with the answer? I think it's a uh, uh, good answer for that question. Uh, okay, okay, we can go for the next question then. The next question is, how does morality impact personal relationships? We answered that one, no? We answered that one okay. for the, at the first question. For the personal relationships? We can go for the next one, if there are. How can practicing morality lead to personal growth and development? Personal growth and development. Actually, the morality itself is the personal growth because you are developing. That is what, when you are developing the sila, uh, I told you the you will be free from remorse. You are free from regrets. Because sometimes you may feel, you, you may have your personal experience, you are regretting about the past because I should have done that thing. I should not have done that thing. So these kind of regrets are there. If you have not maintaining a virtuous life, if you are having a virtuous life, you are free from remorse. That is the first benefit you are taking, which is called the avipatisaro. That is the free from remorse is the first benefit. Then when you have avipatisara, the Pamoja arises. What is Pamoja? The early stage of the uh, Piti. We call the joy. When the joy is there in the mind, you can feel the, you can experience the feel when the joy is there. No? When you are happy about something, that is very pleasant feeling. You are happy about that thing. You are not regretting about anything. No? When the joy is there, when, the, when you are free from remorse, the joy arises. When the joy arises, when the joy is there in the mind, the piti arises, the rapture, the very strong piti, very strong happiness in the mind. Then when the strong happiness, the piti arises, when the piti is there in the mind, then the pasaddi arises. What is the serenity? The calmness of the mind. Then when the calmness is there, then the sukha arises. What is sukha? The pleasure, the comfortability of the mind and the body as well. When the comfortability is there, then your mind tends to the uh, concentration, the samadhi arises. When the samadhi arises, then you can see the world as it is. 
we call the yatha bhuta jnana dasana when you have samadhi when you have a very strong concentration like uh, jhanas you can see the world with your knowledge as uh, truly it is that is the yatha bhuta truly it is you can see the world you can understand the world what is uh, as it is truly then you when you are seeing the world as it is then the nibbida viraga we call the disenchantment you are free from the defilements we call the maggas we call the the very strong vipassana as well as the four maggas noble uh, paths we call the nibbida viraga and when the nibbida viraga when the disenchantment in the mind is there when you are free from defilements then the vimutti jnana dasana then it it helps to become the vimutti means the phala jnana that, mean, that means the fruitions noble fruitions we call the sotapatti phala sakadagami phala anagami phala and the uh, arahatta phala these are the vimutti and the jnana dasanta means the pacha vekkana jnana you are recalling you are uh maggas uh, paths and the palas the fruitions and the nibbana uh, what are the defilements i have eliminated what are the remaining elements uh, remain remaining defilements these kinds of we are contemplating with the pachavekkana jnana these all begins with the morality without morality no avipatisara you are regretting you are not free from remorse without free from remorse you will not feel joy you will not feel the pleasure you will not feel the rapture you will not feel the serenity you will not feel the uh, concentration and you will not uh, experience the uh, results of the vipassana you will not experience the nibbana these all begins with the uh, morality first you have the you should have a, a very strong uh, foundation with the morality that is how we have to understand uh, the personal development when you talk about the personal development Yes. Okay, Bhante. The next question is: What is the importance of morality? What is the importance? I think uh, the previous answer uh, you can get an idea about what is the importance. No, you cannot achieve any uh, results in the. We, you cannot go like we 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 explain in the sermon also. There are seven levels, higher levels. You cannot achieve. You cannot go for. You cannot move into the higher levels without having a uh, purification of moral virtue. Without sila, you cannot achieve because your foundation is not strong. Any time, it it can collapse. So uh, it is uh, it is very important, essential. You made the foundation when you are building a, a home, when you are building a skyscraper or the high-rise building. You should have a very strong. Uh, more strong foundation likewise we have a very huge building to build with uh, higher levels these levels will not be stable if our foundation foundation is a sila morality if our morality is not strong then any time it can collapse it can collapse you cannot go higher levels because you are uh, it will be uh, vibrate and it will collapse because single little small defilement can disturb you can destroy all the result uh, all the results you have gained throughout a, a period of time then you should uh, uh, pay attention uh, for your morality and you have to achieve the purification of moral virtue that is called the sila uh, visuddhi yes yeah. Uh, the uh, next question what are some examples of moral virtues that are commonly valued in different cultures ah different but i don't know what is uh, meant by different cultures uh, but we have only one sasana it is sambuddha sasana Uh, there are other sasanas we call uh, there are so many religions in the world and they are defining uh, that is why i i uh, elaborated first you have to uh, uh, when you go for a city where you have never visited you have to do first you have to do for uh, homeworks uh, before you start the journey what are those you have to 
uh, decide your destination then you have to de define that destination you have to de uh, analyze that detail then you have to uh, uh, decide which path i should follow to reach that destination third one and the fourth one is you have to uh, describe that you have to define that path what are the instruction what are the things i have to follow uh, in this path likewise we have the buddha is admonish buddha has admonished this path this practice to achieve the ultimate liberation which is nibbana free from suffering free from sansara that is our destination so uh, the uh, arahat arahatta magga it is also a supramandan result when you achieve the arahatta magga when you come, become arahant sorry when you become an arahant you have achieved the nibbana that is our ultimate goal our destination there are some other uh, religions that their destination is uh, go to the god go to the vicinity of the god uh, go to the heaven or uh, to become a, uh, like uh, there are different definitions about their destination but our destination is nibbana to achieve these four maggas four palas and ultimate nibbana we call the navalokuttara dhamma nine fold results what we can gain through this practice so that is our destination there is a path also we have to define we have to describe what is that destination how it look likes and uh, what are the features what are the qualities how you can experience that when you achieve that what is the condition of that this is a defi defining that destination and the uh, the third one is you have to uh, choose a path based on your character based on your qualification you can achieve you can there are so many paths you can uh, follow to achieve these uh, supramundane or transcendental results okay the nibbana and you can decide what is the path i go i'm going to follow and then the fourth one is you have to uh, define that path describe that path elaborate that path so uh, without having those home works without that prerequisites you your uh, journey in this practice is not stable uh, you can go somewhere else you can achieve some other kind of a, a nibbana which is not the ultimate nibbana which is admonished by the buddha that should not be done because that is why we need the help of dhamma that is why we need help of the teachers that is why we need the buddha only buddha can elaborate this destination this is the destination you have to uh, achieve this is this is these are the qualities of that nibbana this is the path you have to follow these are the qualities of this path these four things is done by four things are done by uh, buddha we cannot disciples cannot do that but we have that dhamma which is preached which is elaborated by the buddha then we can follow that in different cultures means the that that if if he is a true disciple of buddha that doesn't vary with the culture with the country all the sasanas all the buddhist countries or non buddhist countries if there are disciple who is trying to uh, achieve this kind of uh, ultimate nibbana by following this uh, eight noble path it is uh, not uh, a different way because it is some, sometimes uh, the things you have to follow is uh, almost same The last question is: What are some benefits of practicing morality? Benefits I told, Practice. no. <clears throat> practicing morality, I told the basic benefits. Uh, once again, I will uh, uh, recall those things. The first benefit is avipatisar, the free from remorse. You will not be regretting about the past, what you have done or what you have not done. Uh, if you have maintained a virtuous life in the past uh, now you can experience you may have some few regrets about the past that is because you have not maintained a virtuous life you can ask you can go for a like you can go for a monk 
if you if he is maintaining a virtuous life for a for so many years uh, as a as a true bhikkhu or as a true monk and practicing well effortfully uh, as per the admonishment of the buddha then you can ask he may have few regrets than you that is because of the sila okay if you can go for another person who doesn't have any kind of a sila and he may have so many regrets about the past i have done these kind of thing i have not done i have not done uh, these kind of things so i should have done these things i should not have done these things so these kind of regrets will be there because he have not maintained a virtuous life that is the first the free from remorses and then uh, if you are free from remorses the joy arises the early stage of the happiness joy the paramojja arises then the piti arises the a strong level the, the higher the matured level of the happiness that is we call the happiness piti when the piti is there then your passaddi or serenity arises when the serenity then your your mind is very calm then the serenity is there uh, you will your mind tend you are you will feel the sukha we call the pleasure uh, when the pleasure that means we you are in a very comfortable with the mind and with the body Uh, and with this uh, jo- with this pleasure sukha your mind tends to the uh, concentration samadhi when samadhi is there yatha bhuta jnana dasana you can see the world truly as it is when you are see the world truly as it is you can uh, eliminate the defilements we call the nibbida viraga when you have developed when you have when you have de- eliminated the defilements completely you can achieve the phala the noble fruitions and the pachavakkana jnana then you are a person who have achieved the ultimate bliss of nibbana these are the the basic uh, results you can achieve by uh, having a moral conduct having a virtuous life respect bhante Uh, as we come to the end of this insightful uh, session on the importance of morality and its benefits, um, would it be possible for uh, to conclude with the um, short Buddhist chant? Uh, how how long will it take? Because uh, uh, one venerable is also waiting for the next uh, Dhamma sermon. so uh, i have to give the studio for that venerable he is waiting uh, uh, it is uh, i think uh, within few minutes it has to be begun uh, so how long it will it take uh, about 5 minutes ah okay okay then can we can quickly do it okay please continue chant thank you ah so you want you want uh, you are expecting me to do the chanting yeah ah okay 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 um <clears throat> you are expecting a paritta chanting yeah ah okay okay uh, then we can go for a karaniya matta karaniya mat this is metta sutta so you can join with me also uh, so we are doing a uh, we can chant uh, together namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa ुकुलेनुगिधो न चुदन सचरे किंचन विपरे उपवदेयु सुखिनो वेमिनो हंत संबे सन्ता सुखी तंता ये केचि पान भूतती सत्तरा वा अनवशेषा 
दीघावाये महंतावा मध्यमारस्खानुकतुला दिठावाये वादिंटाये च दूरे वसंति अविदूरे भूतावा संभवे सीवा संभे सतंता भवंतु सुकितंता न परो परान्निकुब्बेत नाति मंगे तकत्तचिनं कंचि भ्यारोसना पटिघसन्या नान्यमन्यस्स दुखमिंचेय माता यथान्यं पुत्तं आयुसाये कपुत्त मनुरक्षे एवं पिसब भूते सुमानसं भावये अपरिमानं मेतंच सबलोकस्मिं मानसं भावये अपरिमानं उद्धं अधोचतिर्यंच असंबधं अवेरं असपतं तिंतंचरन्निसिन्नो वासयानो वायावतस्स विगतमिधो एतंसतिं अधित्थेय ब्रह्ममेतं विहारं इधमाहु दित्तिंच अनुपगम्म सीलवा दस्सने न संपन्नो कामेसु विनेय गेदं नहि जातु गब्भसे यं पुनरेतीति एते न सच्च वच्चे न होतु ते सब सोतिते होतु संबदा एते न सच्च वच्चे न सोतिते होतु संबदा एते न सच्च वच्चे न सोतिते होतु संबदा so I think we can conclude the Dhamma sermon. So I, uh, I would like to, because we have accumulated uh, very uh, valuable merits during this time, so we can uh, share those merits with our teachers, with our parents, and uh, all the uh, relatives who, who have passed away and who are expecting uh, such kind of merits. And also we can share these merits with the Devas and Brahmas who are happy to uh, receive the merits who are happy with this kind of merit and also all the uh, members in the audience all the listeners uh, we all uh, these merits will be a great cause to achieve the ultimate uh, bliss of Nibbana uh, as we expect so uh, may the blessings of the triple gems with you we can conclude the, uh, the Dhamma sermon and thank you for everyone